This is Kogan Cassius for IFL TV. It is Monday the 9th of September at approximately 2200 hours. Delighted to be joined as always, as always, with Mr. Gareth A. Davies. It's nearly past my bedtime, you know. I, f I didn't think rock stars slept. You're probably true, actually, about that. No, I um, just got back from Paris today. I know you've been globe trotting, and um, just kind of regathering myself for a massive week next week, uh, and also this week, of course. Uh, you got Vegas with um, UFC and Canelo, um, but big event in the UK next week with our two big heavyweights fighting each other. Absolutely, we'll come on to that. Um... So, yeah, I mean, we're still, I feel like we're, we're still waiting for the second part of 2024 to kick off. August was quite bland in terms of shows in the UK. We know we had the Riyadh season card in the US at the very start of August, but it was a, a pretty, yeah, uh, bleak month for boxing, I feel, August. But now, creeping into September, and like you said, we've got Canelo this weekend and then the huge uh, Wembley 96,000 fans in attendance card, um, which is going to quickly approach. And next week's going to be a very, very long week. Um, Gareth, I do want to kick things off um, with, well, it was just before, when was it? At the back end of last week, last Monday, uh, His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh went on to talk sport to speak to um, Simon Jordan and Jim White. I'm sure you would have heard that. Some interesting yeah. um, bits to pick from that, Gareth. Definitely. Well, the, the pricing of um, pay-per-view was one of the big subjects. Um, and I think they're trying to create a fan base for the sport by bringing people back. And they've done it in America as well. They're going to make it 20 bucks, aren't they? Which... Is, is astronomical over there normally. It's 79 bucks to 100 bucks sometimes for big events. So they'll be delighted over there. They're trying to create a fan base. Um, I think breaking the records of the numbers of um, spectators at Wembley is another good thing, 96,000. And what um, His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh showed or Tur Turkey, as he's now becoming known to everyone in the boxing world, the most influential character in it, is that he wants to do it for the fighters, but he wants to really consider the fans as well and develop a, a deep fan base, something that we know he's been into doing behind the scenes at briefings that he's given us. And I think it's good when he comes on and speaks. I think, you know, you, you get to hear and feel his passion and genuine... Um, desire to to change boxing for the better and i think they have changed it for the better it's going to be a month a year in a month's time it'll be a year since we really started to see the machinations of what they wanted to do in the sport i think you know just to go back over august for a minute we had the announcement of the october 12th cards the undercard that was quite a big news week We've had a big build-up that, that that hiatus has allowed people to really enjoy and chat about what Joshua and Dubois means and what this undercard is. And I like I like a bit of debate, a long debate around uh, around the big fights. Listen, I've had a, I've had a busy time: two weeks in Paris, a week in uh, LA at the beginning of the month, and that was a brilliant card um, and a brilliant event to be at. I went to Washington in between for an MMA event. And spoke to Jake. I think I told you spoke to Jake Paul and Francis and Garnu. There's a lot going on, um, and I think the size of the Riyadh season cards just puts into perspective the amount of work that needs to be done um, for for those kind of. If you go from Champions League perhaps to Premier Premier League or, or, or First Division perhaps, you know we've got Nick Ball main event coming up. We've got Jack Catterall and Regis Progre. There are decent events around the place. And, and as I said, let's not forget Saul Canelo Alvarez is fighting 
this weekend, even though he's on he's a 16 to 1 on favourite against Edgar Belanga, a fight I think he'll win on points or stop him late. The fight we want to see is David Benavidez. I think all these things will come to fruition. Um, but, the, but next week's going to be very, very big. And for me, it comes down to, apart from the battle of the jabs, because both guys like to use their right hand off the jab, the hooks will come into play. We've seen videos of Anthony Joshua practicing his hook with Ben Davison uh, latterly. But I think just to go back to what you asked there about Turkey Al Sheikh on Talk Sport, it's good that he's getting all the major platforms involved and he puts himself out there and gives his opinion on Twitter quite flagrantly as well. Clearly a passionate man. If, I don't know what the other bones you want to pick through his interview on, on Talk Sport. Um, I mean, one of the notable things towards the back end of that interview, um, I felt like Turkey had given Simon Jordan kind of an opening to... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, giving him an opening. You gave him an opening to um, voice any criticism, any yeah. kind of, any any feedback Simon had. Um, I felt like Turkey was kind of willing to have that debate with Simon on air. Simon, kind of just reading between the lines, said that they would have this discussion kind of at another time, and then Turkey come back and said that you know we will have to do this publicly. Um, because it does feel like, because Turkey does believe that Simon especially has still got reservations and Turkey wants to kind of get to the root of what those reservations are about anything to do with Riyadh season and kind of have it out. That's what it felt like for me from that interview. Well, just to throw that forward, I think, I mean... I appreciate the fact that Simon Jordan was prepared to listen to Turkey Al-Sheikh. And on the other side, to, um, what people don't realise is that Turkey Al-Sheikh has always said to us in press briefings, I want to know your opinions on things. Yeah. He doesn't profess to be the font of all knowledge, to be the oracle on the sport. He can see the, the, um, the things that need fixing. There are things in boxing that simply can't be fixed. Like when we talk about Anthony Joshua, and I... I, I my reservation to say this, I'm going to reserve the right to say this, even though I'm not saying this is a criticism of Anthony Joshua. If he beats Daniel Dubois, becomes a three-time heavyweight champion of the world, um, in a sense, I'd like to have seen him beat Alexander Usyk to become that, or to beat Tyson Fury to become that. But this is the irregular algorithm that boxing lives in. But you know yourself, because you've been at a briefing when Turkey Al Sheikh has said, I want to know your views on things. I want the boxing world, the media, um, and then that includes Simon Jordan and their shows on Talks What White and Jordan, you know, as Fight Night that I do with Adam Catterall or Adiola Oladipo, Spencer Oliver, whoever be it. Um, he wants those views put out there. He doesn't mind those views. But I, I you know, I've been from the very beginning, having had the privilege of being able to talk to him privately uh, a lot of times is that they are trying to find a way to navigate through the issues that exist in boxing. And one of them was promoters not working together. Now they are. Um, TV companies not working together. Big fights being made. And they've got a, a, a blank check, if you like, to make this happen. And that was kind of born out the next day when Eddie Hearn went on to White and Jordan and he spoke and, and to, to, to Simon and Jim. And Simon said, well, Turkey could do away with you if he wanted to, because he doesn't need you. And Eddie Hearn spelt out what goes on in the background to all these things. And in a way, uh, and you know I've said this to Turkey Al Sheikh, His Excellency, that the things he wants to do are huge and effectively involved almost in governance of the sport rather than being a promoter. So they could almost turn themselves into a world governing body by being so, or a world, uh, they, you know, they're overarching as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an entity that wants to change things in boxing. That's why there's been critique from him of the, the sanctioning bodies at times, that they've all got different rules for things. So 
it, as you know, boxing is a complicated space. We used to call it the Wild West. But at the moment, the gunslinger in town, H.E., Turkey, is, is doing a good job of being of being martial, really, in, in, in lots of ways, if I can put it that way. Just coming on to a couple of other points from that, like I said, this is over a week old now, just over a week old, this this interview. We haven't caught up, obviously, uh, since then, Gareth. But um, he, he made his point of wanting to make the Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua fight if, if AJ obviously beats Dubois. But regardless of whether Fury is to beat Alexander Usyk, um, it looks like an offer will be made to make that fight, regardless of the result with Fury and Usyk. Well, you have to commend. Yeah. No, you have to commend that. It's not as big a fight if Fury wins and and Joshua wins. Um, and if people, I, I don't want people to mistake. Uh, we, we all want to see that fight. Um, it's it's one of the biggest fights in boxing, and it's one of the biggest fights commercially in boxing. It reaches outside what we'd call a trade fight or, a, or an in, internally an, an internal boxing fight that was very much for the diehards because that fight is probably the biggest fight in the world because it, we've waited so long for it. We've lost Deontay Wilder against Anthony Joshua, I suspect, because of the state of Deontay Wilder right now. Um, it all comes down to how and if Fury, how particularly Fury loses to Yusuf and what state he looks like in the fight. Because he may choose not to fight Joshua, but I think there's a there's a sense from Turkey al Sheikh that um, that's a fight he ought to be able to make, regardless of the outcome against Yusuf, because it, it, it's boxing has failed if those two don't step in a ring together, in my view. It's failed in this era, because you cannot have... Um, Francis Ngannou having fought Fury and Joshua in his first two fights coming as a UFC champion, heavyweight champion, and yet you don't get um, that triumvirate of Fury, Joshua and Wilder ever in a ring together in terms of Joshua, Wilder and Joshua, Fury. It just doesn't make sense. It's not how a sport should be run. So I get those machinations. There was a lot of noise the week before that from Eddie Hearn, Barry Hearn, saying that fight needs to be made. They were on the, the PR spin, or not spin, but they were on the PR roll with it. Um, but right now, all Anthony Joshua needs to worry about is Daniel Dubois, because there are genuine threats there from this young man who's looked resurgent in his last two, maybe even, well, not against Usyk, but it's certainly in his last two fights. Um, I just wanted to ask you about some of Carl Froch's comments he made recently to myself regarding that IBF title being on the line. Obviously, Daniel Dubois was elevated um, not too long ago to, to full champion. Um, he doesn't believe that either fighter can call themselves a world champion, um, whether that's Dubois or even whoever wins that fight next week. Um, I get where Carl's going with this, um, you know, with Alexander Usyk there being taken one of the belts off him uh, for that situation to happen. And I get that the man to beat in that division is Alexander Usyk. But, I mean, what do you think about them comments? I mean, if Carl referred to it as the equivalent of really what should be a British title fight, in his words. Oh, it's bigger than a British title fight. Um, I know, I think that was Frotch being a bit of Frotch, really, but... Uh, well, Frotch, yeah, point. he's a clickbait merchant now at the moment. I mean, it's, 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 but he does resonate, and he, and he is... He, he He's very commonsensical about a lot of things. Um, and, you know, he, he speaks from a position of one having won... I think it was the vacant WBC. I was at that fight. That was Fury's debut, wasn't it, that night in the Nottingham Ice Street 2008 against Jean Pascal. Um, <clears throat> that was Carl against Jean Pascal on an amazing night, an incredible fight. <coughs> and, and Carl always fought with his heart. And I think when he beat Lucien Boutet, I think that was IBF. 
That was IBF, yes, correct. Won the IBF title off Boutte, didn't he? So Carl is speaking from a position of someone who's been there and done it. You have to give him that credit. Um, but he's also speaking from a position of a man who jokingly, I think, referred to, I'm not coming back unless I can fight Jake Paul or someone like that at the moment. Um, Carl's doing a particular, or taking a particular stance on boxing at the moment. Um, but I, I touched on this earlier that the man to win the title from was Alexander Usyk. And of course, Usyk if, he beat, Usyk, if he beats Fury, will end up maybe fighting for the undisputed title again at some point, um, if he does, if he wants to, and if he has that desire to do so, he's not getting any younger. But I, I, I can't argue with Carl, but it's always happened thus. You know, Lennox Lewis was stripped of the title, of a title. He threw a title in the bin. He, he, he cho chose not to fight certain people over politics, as he called it. And this is a this is a deft move that is politics in boxing, where that IBF title, I, I mean, it's it's a it's an fortunate or unfortunate, however you want to look at it, set of circumstances where Daniel Dubois defeated the timing worked out that Daniel Dubois defeated Philip Hergovic against the odds. Hergovic was the mandatory. Hergovic would have been fighting for the IBF title here against Joshua. Remember, we talked about that months and months ago. Yeah. So they would have, no one would have complained about that because eventually, um, I think people might argue about the semantics of Joshua being a three-time heavyweight champion in the world. I think that's what Carl was arguing about um, because he'll get labelled that if he wins the IBF. But at the end of the day, um, Daniel Dubois put in a brilliant performance against Philip Hergovic, got them the interim title, the mandatory title, sorry, interim title and mandatory status. And then, and, and Usyk was stripped of the title be, because of a rematch with Fury. So it, it, you're creating a rod for your own back because those are the IBF, them's the IBF rules. So even though he relinquished it, he would have been stripped of that IBF title anyway in a matter of days. And it would have been available for this fight. So I don't see Daniel Dubois, I see this almost as a vacant title that they're fighting over. That's what it really is. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that Daniel Dubois himself probably doesn't feel like a full champion until um, if he beats Anthony Joshua. Then I well, think he said that, Coogan. He has said that. He said, I've always seen Joshua as one of the top guys in the division. I wanted to come into the sport to be a Kingslayer. And that's, he's my target. And that's what he wants to do. And that's very impressive of him. It's not about the belt. He wants to beat Joshua. That's the key for him. He just failed against Alexander Usyk, having given him a very hard time for five rounds. And if he can beat Anthony Joshua, he powers to the top of the heavyweight ladder with, with, with Fury and Usyk, in my view. Mm. Next week, it's going to be um, explosive. There's so many like interesting fights on the card. We've yeah. discussed them. You've got Liam Smith and, and Josh Kelly and like, Hamza Shirat. There's Josh Warrington against Akachi. It's uh, a really stacked card. And then, obviously, the 12th of October. <laughs> Again, a lot of um, intriguing contests on that Bivol uh, and Better Be have card. Um, we've got possibly this Latino fight night coming up as well with Riyadh season, which is interesting, Gareth. Is that November? November, I think it is, yeah. I don't know if it's put together yet and anything's revealed. I can't really know, but yeah. I, I, I cannot, I'm not at liberty to to say who the who the fighters are at the moment. I know the card's still being constructed, um, but it'll be a big one. It'll be a really big one. It's another step. Um you know, I think what I can, what I know is, without anyone from on the inside telling me, I think Oscar De La Hoya is going to be over here. Um, and there's going to be some revelations after uh, Dubois and Joshua have fought at Wembley in front of that record-breaking crowd. Um, so, yeah, there will be some... It's, it's good, again, Oscar De La Hoya's tied in. Um, 
Bob Arum and Top Rank are being sponsored, um, headline sponsors by Riyadh Season. Al Heyman will be in on it soon, even though he's got his deal with Amazon Prime. I'm sure he will see the benefits of the business of working with the Saudi Arabian. So it's all cooking up. And I think um, we, we, are, we are getting the biggest names in action around the world. And it's under the umbrella of Riyadh Season. Um, I don't agree with Simon Jordan that Turkey Al Sheikh will get rid of promoters. He will need them. He will need them, even if they go to tournament form format in, let's say, the classic eight weight divisions or in 12 weight divisions, because the nuts and bolts of the industry needs still to be run by the promoters. And also, there's no guarantee that this is a 20 year project. We don't know how long it is. Um, even though they do look like they're in it for the long term, we know about um, Vision 2030. I expect them to be in for at least that long. Um, and then they'll do the Olympics and Paralympics, I believe, in 2036. I'm sure they'll bid for that. I don't know, but I'm sure they will. And we're looking at the World's Cup there in 2034. So there's a building, isn't there? There's women's tennis is is moving towards there's some big tournaments and that. So it's, it's, it's not just the picture of our small pocket of sport. There's a bigger picture to all of this. And, and for those complaining about it, how would we feel if our sport wasn't being invested in right now? We'd be feel on the outside, we'd feel left behind. We'd be having the same problems that we've had up until a year ago in terms of getting some of these big names in a ring together. I want to see Shaco Stevenson, if he defeats uh, Joe Cordina uh, on October the 12th, I want to see him in the ring with Tank Davis ASAP. It'd be interesting, I mean, to have seen or known, or if... Did you say sine qua known then? Are you using Latin tonight? No, 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 okay. no word it. I'd like to have seen or known, or known, what would have happened in boxing over the last 12 months if you completely took out the aspects of Riyadh season? Well, I think we might have got Joshua and... Um, I think I think we would have got uh, Yusuf against Fury eventually, but not for the money that they've received. I don't think... Well, maybe they would have signed a rematch. No, I think we'd have got the fights. I think we'd have got them because... Um, Do you know about that? But not not for the same amount of money. But we can't. There's no guarantee. They were. They were. Look, we remember we were very very close to Joshua and Fury happening. Very close. A double header, which was also backed by a different Saudi Arabian group, until Deontay Wilder won his arbitration case for the third fight with Fury. Um, I think. Yeah, I do think we would have got some of the fights, but we may not have got them in the same magnitude that we're right. seeing now. It's impossible to answer, but even it, like... It is, it is. It's better to be even Bivol, would we have got that? The cards... No, not as quickly. The cards that we had um, over Christmas, even Hearn and Warren, would they, they, they wouldn't be working together now. No, no, they no. wouldn't. There'd still be internecine rivalry between those two. We would not get the, the levels of cooperation. We know in the background that Frank Smith was talking to George Warren and that Ben Shalom was meeting with them every couple of months. I did a story about that in The Telegraph uh, uh, a year or so ago, uh, before the, um, I think before, might have been two or three years ago, that they were working together so that they weren't, they were aligning not to have big events on the same night. But the level of cooperation we've got now, no. And the fact that Ben Shalom has got some, um, I think on October 12th in the Riyadh season opening card, he's got four fighters on that card, which is terrific. He had Bacoli on the card in Los Angeles. So you've got the three promoters, certainly with the with the big three television companies, you know, with Queensbury, Matchroom and Boxer all working together. I see in the next few months, I do see Oscar De La Hoya and Bob Aram working together. That might be that announcement. Um, the Latino card that you're on about. There's, you know, I do think we're going to get promoter, but UK promoter versus USA promoter and fighters are all aligned. I think we'll get that card because um, I think there's an ambition 
from His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh to do these things. And when you've got a pocket as deep as, as they have with their public investment funds, then, then it, anything's possible. That's why we can fantasize about the greatest fights at the moment, Coogan. I mean, you mentioned that card on the 12th of October there. We can't forget um, who's had a lot to do with that card in Spencer Brown, who's worked tirelessly behind the scenes to to put the majority of that undercard together. Like you said, Ben's got some of the other fighters on the bill, but yeah. Um, well, it always makes me laugh with Spencer because I've known Spencer many, many years and you know he's a top guy. He really is a top fella, as well as being Tyson Fury's manager. He is very much an advisor to these cards. He's a very influential player in the market. But you just said it. He's a behind-the-scenes guy, even though he gets dragged uh, front and centre sometimes at press conference deuses. Spencer is a guy that works extraordinarily well behind the scenes. He's got a massive army, as you know, a massive army of workers, and they do merchandising and all sorts of things. And you and I have been on the road with Gold Star before many times. I've done uh, yeah. many shows for Gold Star where I've been. Nights out with Gold Star, to be honest. And, and lovely <laughs> nights out. And they're, they, you know, that they are boxing men through and through. They're, um, and and you know, um, I think. There's an honesty about Spencer that that cuts through a lot of the politics. And I think that's why he's become such an influential figure in boxing. Um, you know, notwithstanding the fact he's, he's he took over as Tyson Fury's manager. I thought I want to say like a year and a half ago, two years ago, whereas he'd always had a close rela relationship with Tyson. And, and, you know, he's one of the sports characters as well. He, he, like I said, I can't say enough good about him. And you can see that he's got the full backing of Turkey as well. Oh, he, totally. He's yeah. an advisor to him. Yeah. And there's, there's... I think that dynamic works very well between... Yeah, Turkey it does, because he's independent of the promoters. I know he's on there as a gold star promotions, but you and I know Spencer well enough to be able to say that he's a very independent person. Um, and, and, and I can say this, man, he doesn't give a shit as well in the right way. Um, and like I said about about it, he doesn't mind putting noses out of joint, but he does it in a good way. He's very honest, um, and and you know, I mean, I'm, I've got to call him a friend in the industry. I've known him a long time, and I think he's been a great bridgehead um, over the last year with Turkey Al Sheikh. He's clearly got his ear. Absolutely, right, Gareth. Oh, I nearly forgot my daughter was asleep. Gareth, thank you very much for your time. No doubt we're going to be talking to each other quite <laughs> quite a bit over the next two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, they're all, all gearing up. I know we've got Canelo this week, um, but then, yeah, next week. It's a big one. Bring it on. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a big one. Box Park, Fanfare, Fanfare. Oh, that, that, that event that was mad as well. Are you hosting anyone at that event or not? No, I'm just going to be going there getting interviews, but the people there yeah. have come so far. I'm, I'm... Emma Khan, Ricky Hatton, Joe Calzaghi, loads of British legends are going to be there. Oh, at Park. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big bad Dell. Yeah. We we'll look forward to it. Yeah, exactly. And I look forward to seeing you all week. It's going to be a big one. I'm really looking forward to it. I'll do fight night on Saturday night at TalkSport and regather re re myself this week. And I think we're going to be all over London next week and very early at Wembley with 96,000 people going. That's a midday get to Wembley for us, you know? Can't wait. Gareth, thank you very much. We'll definitely catch up with you uh, in due course, my friend. Peace out. Top man. <laughs>